up to this point, what I've got is that there is now a system for it to start to do a sign up. We're checking passwords match. Okay, so the if else statement is checking for m matched or mismatched passwords. Let's say this is all we need to do for the mismatched. We could do a lot more based on examples of other apps and such. This is enough for the moment. Passwords don't match, try again. Okay, let's say they do match. So we have the do match result. We're going to deal with the section over here that the passwords do match. So inside of this, it's, it did not match. So they did match, basically. Okay, if they do match, what we need to start to do is the way the login system works, we we're only asking for an email and a password. Those are the th two things I want to store. We could ask for a first name and a last name and all that other great stuff. We'll get to a more complex database saving structure later. We're going to use something known as local storage, which is a built-in HTML5 concept. If you ever look up uh, HTML5 local storage, if you do a search online, just very briefly, you'll find plenty of tutorials and explanation about it. HTML5 web storage or local storage is a way to save data. It's like a cookie, but it saves more data than a traditional website cookie. And the way it works is we have the local storage object dot set item local storage dot get item will be able to easily sh save into the web browser a simple key and value pair last name equals Smith set that uh, password equals kitty cat set that um, we can do retrieve get item last name and it will retrieve whatever was saved there so we use this the same every time, this object, local storage. But we do either the method of set item or get item. Getting the item is, okay, what is the item we're getting? And it'll retrieve what was saved. Set item, this is the item we're saving in, in the memory. This is the value. This is better than a variable because a variable is temporary. As long as the app is running, all of these variables exist. But once you close the app and rerun it, the variables clean out. Local storage is permanent until you delete them. So we can save up to 5 megabytes per item. And we can make a million items. Uh, 5 megabytes per item, but it's a simple key and value pair. Call it something, put some data up to 5 megabytes. So this is what we're going to use for this level of the app. All we really need to save is the person's email and the person's password. So it's two things that we can save very easily. Later, when we actually create the inventory system, we're going to save a lot of things, and therefore local storage is, we've outlived local storage at that point. For right now, it's two things we're saving, so this is enough. And again, regarding passwords and such, yes, we would want encrypted passwords with a you know a salt table and hashed encryption and blah 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 blah. I don't know what I'm talking about we need to encrypt the passwords for full security yes this is gonna be plain text password saved for the moment don't worry about it if that sounds scary plain text passwords don't worry about it for the moment <coughs> we're going to save a little bit of user information this is gonna be saved in the web browser only Firefox will be able to access this data. Uh, if you open up Chrome and try to get item, it won't work. Only Chrome saved it, so Chrome can load it. Firefox saved it, Firefox can load it. And later when we get this into the web browser, uh, the app, it's going to save on the device, and only that device can access it, basically. Yes? It's a little better than the cache because the cache is often temporary. It cleans out every once in a while for various reasons. This is going to be like a permanently stored little piece of information in the permanent area of the device or the browser. So do you, do you just use this and build like a database? 
It, it depends on what we're trying to do. Uh, for what we're trying to do right now, this is fine. But if we want to save a lot more data and a lot of data bundled together, this is not really what we want to do. We just want this for our simple login, logout system. When we talk later about PouchDB, that's the database we're going to use that is much more robust and better for more data. This is a simpler way to save a little bit of data. It can use up to 5 megabytes per item. Um, so if you want to clear, clear the phone, right? And the phone increases, I guess. Well, all that we're really saving, that we're going to save is text, and 5 megabytes of text is pages and pages and pages and pages of info. So I'm not quite worried that this is going to take up so much space on the user's device. That is a good idea, that is something good to think about, but we're saving so little bit of data. Even if they create 50 users, we're saving so little data that I'm not worried about using up the person's space on their device. But we could set up a way for it to check how much have we used, we've used too much, let's clean it out, and so forth. For the moment, we're not using so much data that I won't worry about it. So we're going to save some data right here. If the else part, the passwords do match. So let's first of all create a variable where we temporarily store the email and the password and convert them because we saw uppercase and lowercase do matter. So if you, if you signed in with a password of cat, C-A-T, capital C-A-T, that's different than lowercase. We have the ability in JavaScript to convert characters to uppercase or to lowercase, to keep them the same case, and therefore there's no mismatch. So we will call this temp, no dollar sign, because we're not using jQuery, temp val in email sign up. This is a temporary value of the input email field in the sign up screen. Equals. It is going to be filled with dollar $l in password sign up dot val. You have your p Oops, there we go up. Thank you. So uh, give me the value of what they typed, put it in this variable. <coughs> but before I put it in the variable, one more method, dot to uppercase. We're here with chained methods. There's that object, give me the value, and then turn it all uppercase, or lowercase, doesn't matter, but we want it all consistent. We do have a to lowercase. Make whatever they typed all lowercase, and we'll use to lowercase later. Comma, enter, because I want to do this also for the password. So I'm using the comma. I've got the keyword of var, and I've created one variable, comma, I'm going to create another one. Temp val in password sign up. Same sort of thing. Uh, we're dealing with the element of in. Oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. L in email. Sorry. L in email. Check the value of email, uppercase it, store it. Check the value of password, uppercase it, and store it. Semicolon, end of statement. Again, to see that we're on the right track, console output. This time, instead of just uh, spitting out results, I want to use concatenation. 
to make it a little more user-friendly for myself, meaning, in quotes I'll write, saved email colon space plus space temp val email sign up. In the console, if I'm simply outputting basic things in the console, I'm going to lose track of what am I putting out there again. Don't be afraid to give yourself a message that I'm saying, this is the saved email we're talking about, plus that's the value of that variable. Comma, saved password, plus... So the plus symbol has a different meaning in most languages. It's not 1 plus 1 equals 2. In most programming languages, 1 plus 1 equals 11. We'll see why in a moment. Temp val in password sign up. These lines are going to get pretty long, but you should hopefully understand what I'm trying to do. Can't go back and forth on both at the same time. I'm trying to say a message and then another message. So say this text and then say that variable. Concatenation with building a string. We're putting together a sentence. Save it and test it. Add a password that does match. A, A, go. So again, now that I'm starting to kind of be a little bit verbose, I'm starting to lose track of what is all this again? Okay, so this is the part where the person typed in their address and their password and their confirmed password. This is the part. That's the email I'm trying to save. It has been turned uppercase. I typed it lowercase, it should be turned uppercase. Save password. It was uppercase, it was lowercase, it should have become uppercase. Again, testing myself in the console. Every step of the way, especially if I'm a beginner, especially if I'm trying to figure out this whole algorithm, obviously I could skip a lot of this and just tell you write this, but I want to break it down conceptually as we go on. And then optionally here, just because it looks pretty, I want to do this. I have these lined up here. That's totally optional. The white space, the empty space, doesn't matter. But I personally, whenever possible, try to line things up so that it looks nice. A lot of people, myself included, believe nice-looking code is also good code. It works, but I'd like it to look nice. And just lining up those equals, to me, looks nice. So we have to think a little bit ahead here. We're going to sign up for an account. Uh, and eventually I'm going to log in with it. Whenever we open up the app, let's say tomorrow, uh, it's automatically going to be logged out. We have to program a system to keep us logged in. Again, all of this that we do so easily on apps and websites, someone had to figure it out and program it. So I'm already just to head, head, head this off. We're going to need to have a way for it to remember, are we logged in or not? Are we logged in? So don't ask for my password again. Just get me to the welcome screen. If I'm logged out, then let me log in. So here's another part where we're going to have an if-else statement another pair to check. <coughs> and here's an example where I've got where I would have three of these ending curly braces. So it's a good idea to label these things. This should be end of if else of checking password match. 
end of if else. Of checking for user existing. This chunk right here, we've gotten up to this level. The passwords match. That's that. We've gotten up to this level. Okay, they match at least, but now we need to check does this account exist? Can we log in automatically and such? Yes? So we need to now deal with has a user been created? Has a user logged in? This is where local storage is going to come in. We're first going to check we're trying to do local storage get item. Does this user exist? <coughs> if the user exists, leave us, get us logged in. If the user doesn't exist, then we need to log in. So this if else, local storage dot get item parentheses. So be careful here. We are going to have two double parentheses. Well, one closes the if, and the other one closes the get item. Sorry, get item. what we're going to store into local storage. The person's email, the person's password. So we need a name and a value. We're going to use the name of the email as the key, and then the value will be the password. So we're using the example on the website said last name, you know, get item last name, and it would give you back Smith. We're using the person's email to try to retrieve the password. So the email is the value of the, no, the password is the value of the key email. temp val in email sign up. A person is trying to type an email. Does it exist already or not? If we are trying to check for that email. We're trying to see if it's if it exists. And way we do that is this time we do triple equals no. That's three equals. Check if the user's email exists already. Oh. Triple equal. So log temp file in email sign up does not exist. So we're checking. Let's try to get this item. If it's set to null, <coughs> nothing. If it's if it's invalid, then it's not existent. This email has never been used before. It doesn't exist. We haven't done local storage dot set item yet. So the possibility is that the email exists or that it doesn't. Under else, then it does exist. Uh, it's either or. It exists or not.
So this first part is dealing with it not existing. This first part is, you know, like um, this user doesn't exist. So uh, we we will save this data. Local storage dot set item. Save the email and password in permanent storage. Get item requires what's the name of the local storage object, what's the name of the cookie. Set item requires what's the name of the cookie and what's the data we're saving. So it's also the temp val in email signup, comma, and now we're storing the password, temp val in password. We don't need to deal with the confirm password because by the time we get to this level, it's been confirmed that both passwords match. So I never created a variable for the confirm password. I, not necessary. So I've got the email, I've got the password, I've turned them uppercase, and now I'm going to store them permanently in the web browser or the device when we get to that. So let's store a simple name and value cookie bit of data. I'll show you where the web browser stores it in a moment. And again, just for us to see that it's working, console.log. This time we'll say cookie saved. Storage dot get item the person's email. Okay, so let me run this just to see mine works, and then I'll further explain it. Uh, I'm going to refresh that, saving it with a little bit of easy info. Okay, the passwords do match. I'm about to save this information. It's checking. This account doesn't exist yet, so we just saved this account. If I try to save the exact same data, it does exist. I'm trying to save the same email. It already exists. If I simply change it, you know, triple A, triple A, triple A, here it says this triple A account doesn't exist yet. Let's save it. So it got saved. <coughs> To see where the browser is saving it to, um, the best way to see the result is actually in Chrome. There is a way in Firefox, but I like it better in Chrome. If you do run Chrome, I run it in Chrome and then I save the info to see where this is getting saved. In your developer's console here, you have an item under application. You have local storage. 
this file has this local storage and I've saved this key and this value, this account and this password. Yes, again, it's plain text password, which is, you don't want that, but for the moment, just, just uh, follow. If I save another one, there it is. It's saving this information in this web browser somewhere in a permanent location on the computer. You've got a username and a password. Yes, it is going to save it as a plain old pa plain text password. Yes? With the key, you should repeat all the time the website as well? Repeat the what? Because this is belong to the other website. This is not belong to different websites. Exactly. It's it's your web project. It's so, saving it. Uh, this aa.com, xp.a.com is not ours. One of them is ours. These are examples of people's emails. So notice here, john at smith.com, password kitty cat. I'm just typing it very quickly. AA is very easy to type. So it's not a real website. It's just. Storage only for AA.com. No. Am I right? No. This is not related to a real website. This is a person's email address and their password. So the data being saved here is an email and a password. Yes. I could be there one moment. Uh, so this is the big idea here. Um, a person's email and a person's password is being stored so that we can log in, create an account, log out, etc. And this data is being stored in this web browser, Chrome. If I open it, if I try to view the data in Firefox, I won't see this data. Question. Uh, here, for sign up, you use email. Mm -hmm. Some in some sites just use username, password. Mm -hmm. My question is that if you if you wanted to, for example, uh, get the back of some storage, mm -hmm. username or email. Either one of those will work because you want something that is going to be unique. It's very common for. Uh, a website to save an email as the main login way because it's so unique. But both of those, either of those, could be a way to save your information. But if the username, because of the storage, you use always with the dot .com, mm -hmm. with the email address. Yes. Can you use just by name, for example, Victor? Well, we set it up here that we're asking for an email. Okay. So whatever we ask it for is what we can save. Any email? Yes. Even a fake one, like aa.com. Yeah. If you'd like to see uh, your local storage in Firefox, you have to turn it on. It's kind of annoying. It's really easy in Chrome, right? You just look at application in the console. But if you want to look at your local storage to help you debug this in Firefox, you first have to click on this little gear icon for toolbar options and say show me the storage toolbar then you get a new tab of storage and then I've got local storage this file has local storage and this file cannot see kittycat, cannot see John or whatever I made up because that other web browser has its own sandboxed area that those local storage elements exist there and this one has these local storage elements. So uh, that's not a full security or whatever, but this is keeping things separate. And Firefox would not be able to see the cookies saved in Chrome, and vice versa. <coughs> and for our purpose and the amount of knowledge we have now, this is going to be enough for us to have a login, logout system, an email, and a password. The password is not encrypted. We could look at it, people's passwords, yes, and such, but um, to have it fully encrypted and a real security system, we, we don't quite have the knowledge or the infrastructure to set that up. So let's um, 
and answer a couple of questions. So let me put my code up again. Again, it's these lines are getting a little long. Here's my code so far. Let me do a quick little pause to answer a couple of questions, and then we'll go on. Here's our login system taking taking form. We'll go ahead and save your file. This one hasn't been saved yet. It should say local stores, you have the list, but this is telling it doesn't understand what local storage means. Local storage means what it means.
little seal on it. No, not in that case. Local storage is reserved as a command that does have a database. Um, those that we make up ourselves, like temp val in El Sino, would be better. And if we have a lower case, then that would work. But if the command is reserved in other cases, it should be in case. What if we get there in the past? Same sort of thing. If local storage has, has a capital S there, and the DB decides that we need it, that would be the full caps lock. No, but that's what I'm saying. If we are making our, up our own variables and such, yeah, we can name them and capital letters however we want. But a command, like the if local command, a local storage has to be local because the other case has by its specific
Yeah. 
But you know what? Thank you. 
All right, let's do a little bit more and then we can um, we can wrap up. So at this point, the functionality of checking, do the passwords match? Does the account exist? That's kind of working. And we're seeing it being saved either in Google Chrome or Firefox. It's saving something. So to complete this, if else, a little bit more, if the, if the account has been saved, now when I was speaking with a few people, one way to test it, if it's fully working, was, you know, I'm going to save an account, and it's going to uh, save that, and what I see is that it got saved. It got saved there, but this is still filled in. So if you try to click go this time, I get the other result that it already exists. So to kind of make this a little nicer, I want to delete those items from there. Don't try to save the same data again. We've got that pop-up that is there about success. So we'll have to first reset this form and then make the pop-up. In the previous way that we emptied out the, the values here, we, we emptied we only wanted to empty the password and the confirmed password if the passwords didn't match. This time I want to clear all three of those fields. Imagine I had 12 fields they needed to fill in. 
I don't want to write 12 times val empty, val empty, val empty. We have a way to clear the whole form at once. That's what I want to do now. It's just three fields, but if again, if it was a lot of fields, it would be too much to do manually. So after the say after we say the cookie is saved, we need to reference L form sign up. This is the object of the whole form. Remember, we created that object right there. We created the an object, a variable for the whole form. And then uh, square brackets, zero. This is what, when I was reading about this, this is one little quirk. Just follow me for the moment, and then uh, reset. I want to reset the form, but it looks like there's a little quirk that we have to specify the first form. Uh, in most counting on computer languages, programming languages, we start with zero not one. So the first form is the zero with item. So zero, one, two, three, four. So number one, two, three, four, five. Zero, one, two, three, four. So the first form, zero. The first form that we have there, form sign up reset. That's the whole point there. Clear out the form with a successful saving of an account. And then we've got that pop-up. So we need to do the same sort of thing we did for the error messages. What's the name of our pop-up? Prepare the pop-up, and then actually pop up with some options. So after resetting the form, jQuery selector to select the pop-up, pop sign up success, I believe is what we called it. We can confirm here. Yep, pops pop success sign up. pop success sign up dot pop up to prepare it and then actually open it comma a couple of options this one is position 2 I'll change it a little bit I'll do window position this pop-up to the window instead of the original button that opened it. The previous error message pop-up pops up closer to where you've clicked. This one is going to position this pop-up message in the middle of the window. I want the same transition, so it'll be quotes transition flip. So this is in the if section, resetting the form, giving a pop-up of success for the else, which was that the account, that's the whole thing about this account already exists. We have a pop-up for that, our mismatch, or our uh, duplicate account. Um, so all that we need to do in um, else is just make those pop-ups appear. I'm going to leave alone the fields how they're filled in just to show them if I clear if I do reset to the form and I tell them that account already exists and I clear it out it'll confuse people what did I type so if I reset the form I'm kinda hurting them there so I won't reset the form under else but I'll make these pop-ups and I've got the pop-up of um, pop-up uh, sign up exists Same sort of thing. We've got the selector, specifically the ID 
D of pop error sign up exists dot pop up. You can do the same transitions and all of that. Position it to the window. I'll just copy that whole thing there. I want a different pop-up that will pop up, open it, same animation. I'm using flip animation for this part of it and positioning it to the window. I had a different position and a different, you know, uh, eye-catching animation for the other possibility. So the so the pop up so that account does exist pop up. Then try to beta test it to try to make those happen. Try to trigger that uh, on purpose. Try to save an account that already exists because we're using local storage now. The one you have been using does exist. If you had you know a a a a at a a dot com or whatever like I'm doing that does exist because I was able to create it before. That should then trigger the account exists. If you try to create a brand new one, uh, jjj at jjj dot jjj, well, it's a brand new one. Save it. You should get the first pop up of, you know, success. Question. Missing semicolon. Missing semicolon. Thank you. Yes. So those lines should have a semicolon. Those statements should have a semicolon and a statement. Easy to forget. <clears throat> Both of those. With the text with Say that again. It just simply says success. It should. So if I want to check that result, I'm in Chrome. I kind of like the output a little better for the moment. So I know in my app I have saved. I have saved one of these, so I'm going to try to save again, AA, even if it's a different password, and they're not going to match, passwords don't match, okay. Account already exists, I'm trying to save AA again, okay, I'm going to save um, JJ at JJ.com, password JJ, go, pop up success. All of this that we've done here has related to the function sign up. We've got a bunch of if else. We've got a couple of if else else statements to first check do the passwords match. Then we've got to check does that account exist. We could have even more levels about checking the length of the password and all of these things that we could check. This is enough for the moment. And then the very last thing that I want to do before the function ends, so after the end of the if else of checking match, after the if else of checking for user existence, before the end of the function, this is where I'll have one final console output, just like I had at the beginning of the function, start, finish, start, sign up. I want a finish or end of function sign up. So before the last thing here, I'll say end. This is just for me to fully test it that my code is starting and ending how I expect it. One final console end of the function. All of these lines, we'll count them in a moment, but all of those lines are just for the sign up. The function, this module, this module of function sign up has that purpose to sign us up. And we'll have a couple of other functions, a couple of other modules to log in. We'll have these functions to log in, to log out. We're bundling these commands together. 
in functions so that we can call them as necessary. These are the users I've saved so far. And again, just to keep testing it in my console. Now, as we start to get a lot of console output, depending on your web browser, I, I'm going to once in a while clear my console. Chrome has a little clear icon there. If I get a lot of stuff and I want to focus on something new, it's a good idea to clear your console once in a while. On uh, Firefox, they have it right here on the little trash can. So if you've got too much to look at in your console, you can just clear your console to focus. So what I'm trying to do is save a brand new name. go. So I see before the start of all of this, all of the stuff that happened, the end of the function. All of this happened in between, start and end. So since it's just console output, you can make it however you want. I went back and I put some dashes, start, dashes, end, because visually, quickly, at a glance, I see those lines. All of the other lines are kind of blurring together in my mind, maybe. But if I put some dashes or asterisk or some symbols, those are going to stand out. And I'm going to, for myself, whenever I've got the end and start of functions, I know that that's the end and the start. I'm using the dashes then. What I want to do at this point is uh, I'm going to end the main lecture at this point and I'll put my code in the folder in a bit because when we come back next lecture what I want to do is then start the whole function of log in the whole system of logging in we saw what we needed to do with a sign up a lot of checking if else creating variables next we're gonna to have to start to deal with does that user exist check the password what happens if it's a wrong password and all of that. So there will be another uh, function with several lines that log us in. General question? So when the account already exists, shouldn't we like, publish <coughs> the same code to clear the windows? Well, this is what I was saying, that if the account already exists, if I try to save the same one... It, it doesn't clear. It does not clear, exactly. But what I'm trying to say is, I'm trying to save the same account. If I clear it right now and a person is not paying attention, they're going to be, what did I try to sign in with? So show them that exists. Oh, I meant to type dog.com. That makes sense. Any general questions about what we talked about today? We'll do one-on-one -on -one questions in a moment, but general questions about what we looked at?